appropriate to do a debris mod and micro fracture. We really have to define the problem. What kind of osteochondral defect do we have? Well, there's been a lot of literature in regards to uh, defining the osteochondral lesion that you're talking about here um, and a number of other factors that might make this the right choice for this individual or in some cases, the first choice and hopefully the last choice. Well, the figure that you see in the center is really a picture from Mark Easley, um, his article and uh, Dan Lass, where they, they tried to define an algorithm for osteochondral lesions. And I refer to you to this as it really walks you through some of the factors that are important in thinking about an osteochondral lesion. And an osteochondral lesion size matters. There's a number of experts, many of which are on this panel today, that talk about uh, the width of the dimensions of this lesion with a width of one or 1.5 uh, centimeters being appropriate and less than, than five millimeters of depth. That's the most appropriate. There was a consensus panel of which the publication is in, in Foot and Angle International that looked over a number of factors deciding what are the best predictors for a positive outcome and trying to sort of uh, give you a good, good idea of if this lesion is appropriate for uh, debris bond and micro fracture. And again, size, whether or not the lesion is contained, meaning is it a shoulder lesion? Is it a more central lesion? Where is it located, medial or lateral? That's important. Is there a cyst uh, associated with this? What anatomic alignment of the patient? Is this a stable ankle? We just heard that it's a person who had an ankle a sprain. Is it chronic instability? Is there marrow edema associated on an MRI uh, suggesting that this actually is the cause of the problem? Have they had prior procedures or not? If they've already had this done, doing it again may not be appropriate. Or if it's been done by someone who wasn't as competent as perhaps you might be, doing it again might be appropriate. And age, age matters. So here's some imaging. Of course, we need standing ankle films. Uh, you may be able to see the lesion, but you won't be able to size the lesion on your plain x-rays. Uh, you may even need a, a Saltzman view to look at alignment. The MRI and CT scans are good adjuvant uh, imaging for you. Uh, Rick Burkle's done a lot of work looking at which one's better for sizing. CT scan may be better for sizing, but an MRI allows us to look at that bone edema. So a T2 weighted uh, MRI is appropriate and it'll allow you to look at other lesions, uh, lesions of the tendon. And the bone edema really guides you that this may be part of the patient's pain of their ankle. You also can look for cysts with that. So what is a, a debris bond micro fracture? You know that it's a lesion a cartilage where the cartilage essentially delaminates, and then there could be a component of bone. So how do you perform this? Well, you're going to take away the cartilage down to the rim of a, a stable interface between the cartilage and the bone, hopefully with like a 90 degree angle. So you can make a box out of this or a circle that's sort of uh, at right angles. And then you're going to use a pick or a drill and uh, go through the subchondral bones to allow for bony bleeding to occur. It makes a blood patch that organizes into fibrocartilage. So what is fibrocartilage? Well, it's a little different than, than what it came with. Highland cartilage, we recognize that highland cartilage is type 2 collagen and fibrocartilage is type 1 collagen. There's different cells in a component with this, and there's different ground substance or matrices associated with this. And because of that, it's not as uh, biologically uh, uh, stable, or, or I should say biomechanically stable, as the original highland cartilage, and that makes people worry. Well, what do you do postoperatively? Well, postoperatively, you are going to, uh, to, to uh, put a non-weight bearing classically for six weeks. But uh, there's been a number of individuals who have challenged that, in particular, uh, Kumbe Lee has looked at uh, doing it non-weight bearing for two weeks, followed by weight bearing. Early motion is important. There didn't seem to be any difference between functional outcomes or pain over time. Return to sports can be variable depending on the sport that you're involved in. Well, what are the outcomes with this type of procedure? 80 to 85% pain and functional improvement 
at short and intermediate outcomes all the way out to 7.6 years. There's been second look microfracture studies that have been published just recently in uh, 2020. Again, Kumbe Lee looked at uh, his patients after an average of 3.6 years and found that the stable fibrocartilage was still present. Uh, so that type of follow-up is very important to us. Now we're augmenting these microfractures with all types of products, and we have to keep that in mind because there's other options perhaps if the initial uh, surgery did not work for you. It's not just using uh, a matrix-induced uh, chondrogenesis, as was uh, done in, in uh, Thurman's project in, that uh, was published uh, recently, but also all different types of product. And we're still looking at what might be most appropriate. So with the available evidence, it supports treatment with lesions that are uh, less than 1.5 centimeters in width and less than five millimeters of depth that has an anatomic alignment, ligamentously stable. You get better outcomes for contained lesions. A first time surgery is better than repeat surgeries, doing the same thing over and over may not be appropriate for patients. And again, you can perhaps feel comfortable putting them weight bearing at after two weeks of non weight bearing. Until we meet again, thank you very much.